No, it's not really Windows Vista, though I'm sure you could have probably guessed that. This is another one of those DS homebrew projects from back in the early 2010s that tries to simulate the Windows experience on a console that uh, has no business running Windows at all. Well, maybe not, because we did exactly that in this video. But this is called DS Vista, and I'll be honest, it's not much, but it's still worth taking a look at. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So if you remember back in late 2021, I made a video on Nintendo's XP, which was a cleverly named XP simulator for the DS. And well, DS Vista is exactly that same concept just with Windows Vista. Though this does come from an entirely separate developer who is also French. So this is entirely in French and unlike Nintendo's, there's not an English release. So we have to kind of navigate through all the French menus and everything. Uh, so this was last updated in 2011 it's version 3 and let's go ahead and just start it up and see what it's all about so you get this booting screen here and then it plays the Windows XP startup sound interestingly enough and brings you to the desktop so right off the bat I gotta be honest this doesn't do a great job at mimicking the Windows Vista desktop you see we just have a standard solid color wallpaper with uh, DS Vista up here at the top and um, yeah, I, I, so there are some bugs in this, just to warn you, uh, you're going to see a few as we go through this. And one of them is when you tap up here at the top of the screen, it just displays this like glitchiness going on. And um, we just tap down there to get out of it. Yeah, there are a couple other ways that you can uh, trigger that as well. I guess I'll just show you. You go into the start menu, you hit any of these with the stylus, it will do that same thing. Uh, these options in here are, you know, the same as what's on the desktop, but you have just more icons on the uh, desktop, obviously. But yeah, you have to actually hit A, B, X, or Y, or start here to use any of these functions. If you tap them, it will just do that. And we got a few icons to go through. So we'll just start with buttons here. This is uh, pretty much a test application to see if the buttons on your DS work, which is rather useful. So maybe if you bought, you know, a, a secondhand DS and want a way just to test if all the buttons are working properly, this will do that for you. Though you'll notice whenever we launch an application, the theme down here changes to a Windows XP style theme. And that happens on pretty much every one of these applications. Uh, so we'll go into, I mean, I'm gonna skip over videos because well, videos just doesn't actually do anything. This was a feature that apparently was never implemented. Uh, so yeah, you can't get to it from there. If you hit B in the uh, start menu here, it doesn't do anything. So I don't know exactly what this was gonna be. Maybe it was gonna be just the video player to play files you have on your SD card. Uh, or if, you know, it was going to have some video already included in here for you to watch. But yeah, I guess we will never know unless we hear from the developer himself. Maybe they'll uh, find this video. Who knows? Uh, this text application here, you hit uh, B here to bring up this keyboard. And then we can just type, you know, hello, or, you know, what, we'll just type a bunch of random gibberish, I guess, because uh, using these uh, really tiny keyboards are not super fun. Uh, but yeah, so whenever you, you type what you want, you can hit A here to save it, and then you can quit out of it. And that will save uh, just like Nintendo's does to a, uh, a text file just stored on the SD card. So you could open that up on your computer if you wanted to write some whole, you know, ridiculous thing. And in fact, let me go ahead and do that, because in the Nintendo's video, I believe I tried to paste the B-movie script into it and just see if it was able to open it up. Yeah, I just watched part of my old Nintendo's video, and that is exactly what I did. I just uh, <laughs> pasted the B-movie script in here, and when I tried to open it up, it just, the, the entire thing crashed. Understandably so, because it would it just, the file's ridiculously large. So let's see how DS Vista handles it. So we'll go into text here. I think it's supposed to display if you hit B yeah no that just saved it okay so I, I guess it just uh B should yeah so it just it just completely got rid of it interesting all right let me try to paste something maybe uh, a lot less wordy uh, into here all right here we go interesting so all I did was type hello world and it it, it looks like it's just creating a new document and just overwriting it because if we type in here and we save that and get out of it and then of course go back in 
and press B, it'll come up. And if I were to plug this into my computer, this text will be in that document. So it must just be overriding it. So yeah, props to the developer who I guess planned for uh, people like me trying to screw this up. Uh, but yeah, so that's the text editor. Themes uh, is kind of neat. So you've got a few different themes here that you can choose from. Now, even though this is on the touch screen, you can't uh, tap these boxes. You have to hit A, B, X, R, or L to choose the theme. So we'll choose the uh, first one here. And you see up here, it says that these first two are X, so if we select that one and go back, you see we've got a uh, green desktop wallpaper. I think that's the only thing that changes aside from the taskbar and everything. So we'll hit B, we'll go back, and now we have a blue wallpaper with a window. That actually looks like the logo from the Windows 7 wallpaper just cropped out with solid blue around it. Again, with the same. Oh, we have a different color start menu, though. So that's kind of nice. Then we've got a Windows 98 one. So this one, we've got the start button here. We have what looks like a Windows XP taskbar. We have a wallpaper, but the text is white on a light wallpaper. So you can't really make it out super well. So we'll go back into themes here and we'll select uh, Windows 7 as the last one. This one is probably my favorite. I think it's the most uh, complete looking theme. We do still have kind of some hard to read text mainly over the logo here, but you know, it's okay. So yeah, that's the Windows 7 one. Uh, these are the games. Now all these games were developed by the same developer. So he just put them on here. And we've got a number guessing game, a cookie clicker type game of just tapping something on the screen a lot. And then Tom's World is kind of like a Super Mario clone, sort of. We'll start with the number guessing game. This one is super basic. All you do is literally input a number. So what's funny about this is you don't even get just a numeric keypad. You have like almost the full keyboard, but you see you only have the, the first two uh, letter rows here. But yeah, so it asks you to put in a number between 1 and 100, let's say 6. And it will tell you, um, oh, you have to hit enter. This is backspace. This is enter. And it'll say it's too small or too large. So six was too small. Let's try maybe 70. That's too large. So let's try 50. That's too small. Okay, so it's between 50 and 70. How about 60? That's too large. So it's between 50 and 60. 55 too large okay we'll just start going down from here 50 not 5 54 too big okay 53 too big 52 there it is and then you get the option to try again or quit and we'll just quit out it but that is literally the entire game uh so monkey touch we'll tap the screen to start you just have this PNG of a monkey going around the screen. You have to tap it as many times as you possibly can. It just moves pretty quickly. What's interesting though, is there is a bug with this game. If you start it up and just not touch the screen at all, it will start registering touches up here, which is rather interesting. So yeah, that's a bug. Uh, let's see how many it gives me. There's also annoyingly not a countdown timer. It just says you'll do this for 30 seconds, but it doesn't you know, show you how much time you have remaining. So it apparently thinks I touched the screen six times. Next up is Tom's World, which is the most feature complete out of all of these. So you've got three options, start game, uh, read the instructions. So here's the instructions. Um, annoyingly, you can't, if you were to read the instructions, you cannot just quit out of it and go back to the previous screen. Um, you have to hit start to quit and then launch it again. Same thing with credits. So we'll view the credits here. Got that same uh, website that was linked in the other game, of course. And we start, quit out of it, go and do it again, hit A to start. And yeah, so all you have to do in this game is run across the screen and touch this orb. Um, but the orb is permanently on the screen, you can see, even as I'm moving. And it just, yeah, it just stays there until you reach the end of the level where it won't scroll anymore, and then you'll actually be able to touch it. Uh, so yeah, there's no enemies or anything. There's also like some glitched uh, platforms and stuff in this level. So I can actually just clip through this, uh, that bottom part there. And yeah, there's no enemies that you can't go into these warp pipes. You can see this is very like Super Mario World-esque just with the design of all this stuff. And yeah, so we reach the end of the level, touch it, and then we teleport, I guess, to the next level where we'll do the same exact thing. So we'll get to the end of this one. And now the platform design kind of changes and the ball has been moved up. So we have to, uh, I guess, get up top to, to be able to reach that. Um, and oh, oh my, okay, that's, what the? <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to happen. Uh, yeah, you can see there, it, it is definitely rather glitchy. 
Uh, this is this entire thing is not as uh, whoa, <laughs> it's not as complete as Nintendo's XP is. I guess I I guess I touched it, yeah, because it moved. This is a different level. Um, so, <laughs> but yeah, so that is that is this game. I don't know how many levels of this there are, but we'll just quit out of it because it's going to be kind of the same thing for however many levels. So yeah, that is Tom's World, and those are the games. Right here we've got a calculator, which is also kind of uh, convoluted in just the way that it works, because it's not just like a regular calculator. You have to choose what function you want, so we'll say addition, and then you get a full keyboard again, so we have to hit just whatever first number, so we'll hit two, the second number, I don't know, 90, and then it gives us the result. And then we have to hit the down arrow to go back to the main menu. If we want to do addition again, we have to hit A. And let's just do, I don't know, some ridiculously long number here. Oh, there's a maximum. Look at that. Okay, so we can't do like really large uh, number adding, I guess. And so, yeah, there's the result. We hit down again. Maybe we want to do, I don't know, division. We'll hit Y. What happens when we divide by zero? Let's see. We can't choose zero. Ah, look at that, okay. Can we not even hit, what? Okay, it somehow registered it as dividing by zero, even though zero did not show up. That's interesting, let's try that again. Let's go into Y, let's maybe do just a small number, nine divided by zero. Yeah, we cannot hit zero, but, oh, I guess if you don't enter anything, it just registers that as zero, but then it gives, <laughs> yeah, it gives you uh, that result. So, uh, okay, we'll get out of that again. And yeah, so that's that's the calculator. And last but not least, we have credits, which will once again give us the developer's website. And yeah, there you go. The clock does not do anything if we tap it. The start button, again, we cannot tap on any of these options. It will just error out, or not really error out, but just do this uh, glitchiness up here at the top. Uh, but if we want to open up, you know, the text editor from here, I can hit X and we get access to that. But there are not any additional options in here aside from shut down, which if we hold down the start button, it will bring up this menu and we have to hit A to confirm shut down and it will turn off the console, which is rather nice. But uh, yeah, overall, it is not as complete as Nintendo's XP is. Uh, that was a lot. It just felt a lot more put together. Um, but still, I mean, it's kind of neat. This was completely free and, you know, it was meant to be like a novelty thing. So, you know, you weren't supposed to take it too seriously, but, uh, there you have it. That is a uh, DS Vista V3 in all of its glory, I guess you could say bugs and all. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, maybe turn on notifications or become a patron or a channel member to get early access to my future episodes. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.